Hey mate, you right? <laughs> the plan was never to not get us involved. Um, look, I mean, <clears throat> from a winger's perspective, the game you know, wasn't ideal, but I think you guys know now that I'm happy to do whatever's required to help the team win. Um, so my frustration with the game was more because of the result as opposed to um, you know, me not touching the ball. Um, you know, Obviously, ideally, I would like to, to be involved as much as I can, but I understand completely when there are certain games, it's not going to happen. Um, and that's just the way rugby is. Uh, and, you know, this week there's been a lot of focus on, you know, shifting a little bit of, of mindset and stuff like that. And, um, you know, trying to exploit space a little bit better. But, you know, I trust those guys with my whole heart inside me, George, Owen, whoever it is, um, you know, to make the right decision, whether to kick or run. And, you know, I just want to, from my personal perspective, I just want to make the most of whatever opportunity is given to me, whether it's to chase the kick or to run with ball in hand. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, there were so many other areas that, that obviously didn't work as well that you have no control over. Set piece didn't work. All, all, all those areas on Saturday. But that mindset you're talking about, trying to use space a bit more, can you just, just expand on that? It's obviously something that, that you're always trying to do, presumably. Yeah, it was just, um, you know, I guess it was a little bit more individual responsibility. Um, those guys on the outside taking a little bit more ownership of helping the guys on the inside when we see space, um, you know, to make their decision making a little bit easier. Um, I'd say that that's, you know, one of the main focuses from an outside back's point of view is is looking up, trying to help those guys make the decisions they need to make. Um, but like I said earlier, I trust them entirely with, with what they're seeing. Yeah, sure. And just lastly for me, do you take encouragement as a back line from what France were able to do against against Italy last weekend, that they showed that it's possible to cut them open and find that space and that um, it gives you encouragement that you can go and do the same? Uh, I wouldn't say it gives us encouragement, no. Um, Italy will probably be a, a pretty different side this week. Um, and, you know, we're, we're a different side to France. We attack in a different way. Um, so I don't really look at it and compare the two. Um, you know, you guys know how quickly a team can change week on week. So, you know, it's it's virtually impossible to say that that's the same Italy that's going to show up. Thank you very much. Cheers, Alex. Uh, nothing really I mean like I hadn't really the first half anyway I hadn't really noticed that I hadn't touched the ball to be honest with you I was trying to like I was saying to, to Alex I was trying to influence the game however I could and whether that was in the air or defensively or um, you know uh, you know, dummy line searching for the ball at least then I was happy to do that so at half time I didn't really notice it to be honest um, you know I, I'd probably say 15-20 minutes or however long it was into the second half, you know, I, I started trying to get a little bit more involved, trying to get my hands on the ball. But you know, it was a, it was a difficult game to do that, um, and that's just the way the way it is sometimes. Um, you just got to roll with it. And a slightly separate um, question: um, I saw you responding on social media to a couple of people who said they weren't going to watch England because. Players are taking a knee. I don't know if you were able to expand on what you wrote on Twitter. Yeah, I just feel very strongly that it's a double standard at the moment. You know, you guys and, and everyone really wants athletes to, to have opinions and, and express themselves. And then when they do, um, a lot of people are shot in the foot for it or, you know, um, even more serious things are, are, can, can, can come from it. Um, I think particularly with the, with the kneeling stuff and the Black Lives Matter stuff, I think, you know, if people, you know, were educated fully on to why kneeling was was started, um, then they would be, a, you know, in a much better place to to comment on what we're doing and and what's going on. Um, you know, not everyone who's kneeling is is directly associated with the Black Lives Matter organisation because some of their views, in my opinion, are a bit extreme. 
but you know the importance of kneeling to raise awareness to social injustice um i think is still massively important so to see people on social media try and discredit its its importance for me is i can't let that slide Trying to sort of get across, don't seem to be necessarily getting through to, to everyone. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but my point is just that people don't really understand that not everyone who's kneeling is is directly correlated to the Black Lives Matter organisation, and people just want to jump on that because it's it's their way of of disagreeing with it instantly, you know. Um, and for me personally, like I said, I can't let that slide. Yeah, completely. Um, I think it's it's kind of twofold. Um, you know, firstly, I, I would I would take individual responsibility and not communicating as as well as I can be, or not looking for the ball as much as I can be. That's the first place that I would look before I said anything about the game plan or anything about how much we're kicking or anything. Because, like I said, I trust Owen and I trust George and I trust Ben Youngs with everything that I've got. Um, so you know, I'd say that that's the main point. But also, you know, there's there's a time and a place for for, for that type of rugby, and um, you know, sometimes you've got to take the the option that's on and the best option, which is to kick in behind and, and, and chase well. And you know, with Johnny and with Elliot, you've got two guys there who are very very quick and can put a lot of pressure on defenders, force a, t- a bad kick back, and that's when you know our our counter attack is is most lethal. So, you know, there's there's method to the madness um, and there's method to everything that we do. Um, it's just, yeah, sometimes I don't think people fully understand why you, you do certain things. Um, so those, that's, those would be my two points to, to anyone who wanted to, um, I guess, uh, criticise the way that, that we have had played. But I also do understand that, you know, there was options where we could have made a different decision and ran the ball. So it's... You know, we could be here all day talking about it. <laughs> Just to follow up on it very quickly and say, given that, you know, the, there hasn't been that sort of, you know, the running game quite so much, will you, would you sort of reassure people who want to watch at the weekend that if the chance comes, the guys like you guys in the back three and the, the attacking runners England have are sort of ready to, you know, you're sort of primed and ready to take those chances. It's not like you've sort of forgotten how to play that way. That's still instinctive in you, but in you tune to that. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, if it's if it's there for us to run, I can guarantee you will be running the ball. Um, if it's there for us to, if it's there for me to give the ball to Johnny in space, I'm going to give him the ball because you know there's not many players in the world more destructive in, in space than him or Elliot. So, yeah, I can guarantee you that is the case. Thank you. Cheers, Chris. Eddie Jones said that this could be a catalyst, like what happened against Scotland two years ago. Do you think that is the case? And this can be something which you look back on as a key learning point and something which completely changes your fortunes over the coming weeks? Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're looking to have used it already. Um, we're looking to use it um, in the way that we've prepared. We're looking to use it in the way that we're going to perform at the weekend. And uh, so far, so far this week, it's been good. Um, there's, there's, there's been a step up. Um, uh, and uh, as I said, like we're looking, we're looking forward to to Saturday now. What sort of response do you think we'll see based on what happened last week and and what the conversations you've had in the week? What can we expect from England? Well, we're looking, we're looking forward to showing it rather than talking about it mainly. Um, but but uh, hopefully you see a team that uh, that attacks the game. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, Owen. Thank you. Thanks, James, very much. Do we have any other questions for the live section? Neil Barker, we'll come to you. 
Hi, Owen. Hope you're well. Uh, just to, you know, your performance on the weekend did unfortunately get a few critics kind of with their poison pens out. Um, do, do you feel perhaps that your your lack of you know top class rugby over the last few months impacted on your performance and your your kind of Sarri's teammate performance on the day? Uh, I, I don't I don't think we'll know, but it doesn't feel like it did. No, I think obviously. We're, we're disappointed, uh, massively disappointed with uh, me with my performance at the weekend. Um, but uh, as I said, we're, we're now we're now looking forward to this week. We we feel we've got a good feeling in in and around the place at the minute. Um, we've felt like we've prepared well, and we felt like we've used used the the disappointment of of the weekend well so far. And we've got to make sure that we keep building it towards the game now.